It's time and I'm here. Hello, everybody. This is Debbie Dashinger from Dare to Dream podcast and radio show. I'm so excited for today's show. I was just sharing with my guests before the show. It's amazing sometimes to book somebody, but they get booked so far out. And even though you have all this excitement at getting them on your show, you still have to wait. It's like Christmas. So today is Christmas for me. And I've got Jamie Price here. She's going to be talking about her crystalline soul healing modality and how she channels healing energies through light language. This is universal languages that affect great healing. And she's got tons of videos out there that you can watch on YouTube and also a great newsletter. Dare to Dream podcast won the COVR award for best radio and podcast award. It is also listed in Apple Podcasts as one of the top self-improvement shows. It won it won <laughs> and Welp Magazine for one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year and also is nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. Whew. Thank you guys so much for your support. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out in the world. So if you'd like to become a facilitator or take a class anywhere globally, go to Dr. Dane here. H E E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a media visibility expert. I'm a book writing coach. And I also take authors' books to a guaranteed international best selling status. I do all the heavy lifting for the author. And the third part of what I do is I help spiritual messengers understand how to get booked on radio and podcast shows and then how to get massive results. If you'd like to learn how to do this, I've got a free gift for you. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. Well, today I am speaking with Jamie Price. She is the author of Opening to Light Language and the Cosmic Consciousness Ascension Deck. I'm going to hold up this deck, should you be needing an Oracle deck. And I'm also going to hold up her beautiful book, all in colors matching Jamie and I today. Thank you very much. Jamie is an energy healer. She's a channel. She's a teacher. And she's been teaching the path of empowerment for over a decade. She developed a profound healing modality, crystalline soul healing with her Lyran guides. Hmm. It's a powerful alchemical template of soul progression that heals and empowers bridging the inherent wisdom of the human and higher self. In addition, Jamie channels healing energies in the form of light language, which are transformational creation codes that further align you with your soul. She teaches both of these modalities worldwide. Jamie offers unique and transformative classes for personal healing, light language downloads, and a healing light language deck and her book. And for more information on the amazing Jamie Price, go to her website, and it is spelled J-A-M-Y-E Price. And with that, I welcome the amazing Jamie to Dare to Dream. It's great to have you. Hello. Thank you, Debbie. It's so good to be here and to finally be meeting you live. Yes. You know, so you and I met actually, like, I know it's divine circumstances when what happens happened. I'm in a light language class. Somebody asks a question, somebody else responds and says, you know, when I started learning light language, I got Jamie Price's book. Someone writes down the name of your book. They go and buy it, not I. I they go and buy it. And then they get the book and they open up and they say, wow, that's crazy. Uh, did you know that Lisa Royal Holt is one of the many people who wrote the forward um, there, and an endorsement in Jamie Price's book. Okay, well, I know Lisa, she's been on the show. I've gone to her workshops, et cetera. And then a woman I've not even known before that somebody in Australia decides I have to meet. I'm in the US, she's in Canada. We connect. And in our beautiful and brief conversation, getting to meet one another, she says, I think there's someone who needs to be on your show. 
And I'm thinking, oh, I get pitched all the time. I've been doing this 16 years, but okay, she's so sweet. And not only was she sweet, she was connected. She sends me your website. And I said, well, (laughs) I think I'm supposed to meet Jamie Price. And here you are. Yeah. I love those synchronicities. It, it, it just brings so much to the experiences and, and then it helps us know all of these, I don't know, just all of these converging forces. They're like, Oh, here's information flow. Here's information flow. So I, when I got your email, I was like, Oh my gosh, so much fun. Got to do this. And your name is, obs- I've been obsessed with your name too. I have to say, cause I walk around and I mispronounce it on purpose because I love how it's spelled. And so I've even made like a hymnal out of it, Jammy. I just love Jammy, if you ever decide. <laughs> but is that your original spelling of your name? It is. It is. It was the 70s. So that's what my parents did. And uh, that's actually what I tell people, because usually they'll sometimes see that there's a Y in it, and then they'll spell it J-A-Y-M-E. And I'm like, no, if you're hooked on phonics, which is how I learned to spell, if you're hooked on phonics, it's jam ye. <laughs> Perfect. I got the download. You and did. I have to use one as well. I mean, my name is interesting. So it's D-E-B-B-I. There is no E. So I tell people, think of a ribeye steak. And that sticks. Well, exactly. I have your amazing cards here. And I thought it would be fun to, to pick one. And I just have to say, I have a lot of Oracle decks, but this is now my favorite. Because mm. every time I pick something, I'm amazed at how apropos the, da- the download that you got to write these. And I just want people to see how spectacular this is. So there is light language writing, which blows my mind on each of these. And what I love is you don't have to understand there's energy in these cards. So would you play with me and can I shuffle and you tell me when? Okay. Okay, it feels like a win. Okay. So this W-I-N. is our W-I-N. <laughs> This is our theme. Oh, how what a beautiful theme. This is peace, Pleiades expanding. Nice. And now I could read from your book. Can you give us an interpretation and maybe how that might translate to right now yeah. and you and I being together with whomever and all of who is enjoying this live or replay. Yes. So one of the things that um, I believe it's even the mantra in the booklet, but I don't have that by memory, but one of the things that I loved that was a core teaching of Ariane, the Lyran Council of Time that I channel is that peace is an active state. And the, uh, Actually, I'm going to kind of back up and talk a little bit about the Pleiades first, because um, this it, it's an important energy for many of us that have that connection, and, and the Pleiades are very connected to our human experience. But the, the reason they are the expansion suit, because there's four suits in the deck, is their progression through ascension was one of the most rapid and they had a a much quicker movement through not focusing only on the negative, nor just avoiding the negative. And that was something that was a Lyran Vagan um, exercise for who knows how long (laughs) But the Pleiadians really had the support to move through that much more quickly because they did the integration phase of the negatives and positives, quote unquote. And peace is something that is an active state, that we are in a creative mode when we're peaceful. And that takes some reworking sometimes and applying it into our everyday life. 
especially in these times where these past however many years have felt, at least three years have felt so intense and amplified. And so peace is like a symphony. It's like a melody. It's going to go up and down and it's going to have peaks and valleys. It's going to have things that stir you into something that's like, yes, and then something that's poignant. But the active state within it is that neutrality that holds you like the subatomic model, where in the nucleus of the atom, there's the neutrons and the protons to speak linearly. So that positivity of the proton and the neutrality of the neutron holds that stable balance. And then the opposite, the negatively charged electron is able to blend into that but it's that bridge of the neutron that keeps that more stable as it goes through change. And that's what peace is for us. It's going to be up and down. It's going to feel poignant. It's going to feel, um, you know, exciting. It's going to feel like release sometimes. And other times it's going to feel like activation, but it's the active state of creation that keeps you open to all of the information, what may seem positive or what may seem negative that's in your life that creates that new form. Mm. I love that that's what we got because what I especially started noticing, I would say at least within a year, maybe for two years now, peace took on a whole different exercise. It was kind of like lifting weights where you're like, oh, this is easy. I can do this. And then you go and you have to, it's time to shift something. And you're like, whoa, this is hard. What's going on? (laughs) And it's because you're at that next level. And that's what it's felt like for so, so a couple of years, at least connected into peace where it's like, I am up to more actively maintain my peace within the external that's going on. Mm, Powerful. Do you have any suggestions for people? in these interesting times where it is the peaks and valleys and certainly so much externally is changing. But from what I understand from people, things are falling away that just don't serve you. And it's not always very comfortable. It's not always something that someone actively made. um, Obviously it's a soul choice, but they didn't actively make a choice an action choice towards, but it's happening in their life. And, and even, you know, a lot of spiritual people, they get it. It's like, they're trying to flow with, but it is trying. So for, for all of us, when it is not peaceful, how can we write ourselves back to that Mm. peace? Yeah. So, um, especially in these times, but I, I've been using this practice for a long time, which is have a variety of things that you can go to. So I call them my list of go-tos because one day I can meditate very peacefully, no music. Another day I can't focus. So maybe I need music. Another day that's not happening. I need movement. Another day, I have to be out in nature or it just won't work. Another day, I have to focus more on release. So I need fast music or something that's going to stir either something exciting or maybe even some tears or something else that needs to process through. Mm. So I have to have those go-tos that are like, is this working today? Let's find out. Okay, let's let's go through something else. What does my body want? What does my mind need? How can I work with what's going on and get into those, even if it's just for a moment, like sometimes the meditations are shorter, sometimes they're longer, it just varies. And anything that I can do that's more uh, nurturing and helping to soothe the mind and then of course there's always the the normal ones like you know are you playing and resting and eating and um not imbibing too much news or negativity um are you utilizing some of the self soothing and self talk that is supporting your openness or your peace in that moment and uh, especially maybe this past 8 or 9 months Um, That self-love and self-nurturance has been really important. We're continuing to 
change really rapidly. So the sensitivities go through ups and downs and sometimes they just don't make much sense, but that's why I like that wide variety because sometimes my body just can't, what worked before isn't working now. Mm. So that's, that's what I would recommend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that necessitates being in touch with yourself and what's going to serve you and then having several things on that buffet that will serve you that are your go-tos or maybe something new will pop. Um, that's wonderful. That's really fluid. I like that a lot. You call, uh, you call the natural process of ascension an ever increasing conscious connection with the subtle realm. What do you mean by that, Jamie? Mm. So to me, this, this process that has, it has physical changes to it. It certainly has mental and emotional changes and spiritual changes, how we, we uh, focus our life, but the core of what it really is, is more of a conscious connection with the non-physical, the subtle realm that's always been there. So the, the con conscious connection with the subtle realm first starts with our thoughts and emotions and our intentions, because that's what Ariane calls our subtle bridge. Subtle speaks directly to subtle and the thoughts and emotions and your intentions are your speaking directly to the subtle. Another way of saying that is the subconscious mind becomes more merged with the consciousness. And so we're processing through a lot of beliefs, a lot of old trauma, um, opening up to more empowerment so that we can handle our sensitivity, so that we can handle the connections that we're meant to have. And that process is very natural to us because it's always been there. It's part of us. And it's another aspect actually of that subatomic modeling that um, Ariane has talked about for so long, where that 99.99999% space, that's, we have that same ratio within us. We are a little less than 1% matter, this part, and then 99.99% space or subtle or potential or the unformed. And so we're becoming accustomed to dealing more with the unknown, with the potentials, with the unformed, with the, the rapidity and ease of working more with that vast engine that builds worlds rather than just efforting. And then we're blending those two because we are still in physical, we're still having the experience of separation. And that's a valid part of our experience. But we also know there's more to the story and getting used to the invisible and the, the subtle and the unformed and the unknown takes some application into the next layer of your experience. And it's very natural to us. They also say life is fail-safe towards love because we come from love. We are love. Love is the binding force of life. And it looks very different and different experiences. You know, some of it might feel more effusive. Some of it might feel a little more um, uh, stern or stoic or um, uh, connective or mental. But as we keep getting back to that core, we're getting into a core of connection that is what ascension is about. So we're bridging that higher frequency self into the physical realm and applying them both together. You mentioned the unformed a few times. So it sounds like there's a new sense of that. I mean, clearly all of life is no thing, right? And we go into that space, quantum zero point, no thing. That's where creation takes place. <clears throat> but it sounds like you're referring that this time right now has a new idea of an unformed and that it's a, it's a new way that we need to be around that. Is that correct? Yes. And, and uh, even the beauty of like pulling the peace card, which we could say that in so many different ways as well. You know, it's, it's that open connection. It's that willingness. It's that adaptability. It's that, um, 
neutrality that knows that all is well Mm. and all is changing because we're in the realm of change. We're in the physical experience of linear time. So the constant here is change. And when we're we're flowing through that in that open state of peace. We're in an active state of creation that says, I'm a creative being. I know that all is well. I know I'm creating in this present moment. I hold all that's ever been experienced in the past in the present moment. And I hold pure potential of the future in the present moment. Mm. So becoming accustomed to that means that you have to let go of some of those expectations of, well, I see what's happening in the world or in my life. And so there's, there we go. That's, you know, the science or the fact or the, the way that things are, well, we're the ones that are so focused on potentials that we can be in that present moment, understand those and also hold potential and that's where things start to move at the rate of synchronicity, that where changes come in that aren't just the old with a new facade, they are the unformed because we're breathing them in to the physical. And maybe some of them will happen in our lifetimes. Maybe we'll experience them directly in our life. Maybe we won't, but it's that potential that we're holding and that knowing of the unformed that life is continuing to evolve towards love, that as we're holding that vibration more and more, even in moments that feel like tears, for example, what's at the core of that? The the blessing of release and processing so that there's clarity within or um, a, a anger that's recognized instead of suppressed, that it can process out in a way that frees your body and creates a new experience, whether that's directly, the new experience is directly with someone or not. It's, it's the, the unformed rather than the past reforming. Mm. You had your, well, I loved your book, by the way, your story is amazing. And you had these off-world memories of being a Lyran. Hi, sister. Me too. And a Syrian star seed as well. And you began to receive and transmit messages from cosmic beings. I mean, I guess I'll start there. As a fellow Lyran, would you even recognize me? Would you see someone like me and go, oh, yes, you too have been there. Sometimes it's more obvious and other times it's not. It just kind of depends on what's up. And um, for you specifically, I can see it on your face. The first time I saw your face, I was like, that's a Lyran face. I don't know what it is. It's like the lion connection or something. It just feels like you have that cat energy that just feels strong sometimes. And it's even possible that someone's in a a phase, you know, in a, in a, a resonance that that might not be as dominant, but sometimes it is. And for you, it was dominant for me. And are you still in contact? Do you still go off world and have those experiences? Definitely. Definitely. Um, there, there are times where it's stronger, like there's more happening. There are times where um, it's not as strong um, and it just varies, you know? It's it's something that for the most part, when, if I'm in a learning phase, then it's pretty obvious. If I'm in a connection and and something that needs to be conveyed it's pretty obvious sometimes i'm more in my own processing and it's not as strong or sometimes i'm just in a plateau period every once in a while because i've been on the just strong ascension journey set for about two decades now um and a little bit more and i there are times where i'm like there used to be a lot more fireworks you know, it just goes into kind of a plateau phase. And then I just know that that's the way of it. And then other what times- What do you mean by fireworks? Come right back. 
You mean the like, connection? whoa, what a cool off-world experience or, or, oh my gosh, I, that happened. You know, just some of those internal experiences that you have. And other times it just kind of plateaus where you're integrating or processing or something. Mm. It's, and- it's the kind of thing that I love, but I had to learn to accept it when it comes and then accept it if it doesn't. Mm. What is it like interacting with the Lyrans? So for me, I'm, I'm very clear audience with guides. Um, I have visual skills, but I don't often and very rarely what I see guides and I've never, I don't recall ever seeing my guides. Um, I, I sense them or I have a feeling or I hear something, but, um, for me, it feels it feels very nurturing, but not overly um, emotional. And it yeah. feels very comfortable and supportive, almost like a very calm teacher would feel. So um, that's that's my experience of it. Um, yeah, I read recently that. Uh, and it was shocking to me to read it for several reasons, but that it is believed that the original Lyrans were of the Elohim. Mm. And I don't know if you have any information about that, but that was very uh, fascinating to me. And um, there were, there's some of the original Lyrans anyway, or some of the original mm-hmm. creators, they created universes and, and some of the original beings um, amongst others, but, so I thought that was a fascinating connection to, to yeah. come from a creator's status like that. Yeah, the um, it, it just kind of depends on where you hit your galactic history. You know what I mean? Like I you, you tap into different parts of it and and it's one of those things that's like, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm seeing the veins in the body that it's like, oh, well, there's a vein. Okay, well, there's a bunch and there's capillaries and all of these other things. And, um, that, I mean, that makes sense. And yet the, there are lyrics that I connect into that are more current, I would say. Hmm. And then, um, Ariane and other variances of that group. Um, sometimes when I connect in, I'm like, wow, it's, it's, it's such a different, it took me years to get used to them. It's such a different vibration because it's not, um, it's not, they, they aren't physical. They, it's uh, much more ancient. And mm-hmm. so um, that would make sense, that kind of Elohim connection. Mm, yummy. That sounds so exquisite. Sometimes when, um, cause you know, especially with channeling, um, channeling in English or channeling light language, the, the light language will tend to have a lot more variety of, um, energies because they're, they'll come and cycle in rather quickly. If, if that's what's to occur, um, for a long time, I've only been channeling Ariane, but I channel other energies and, and used to channel a lot of different energies, but, um, at certain levels, you can feel the crossover, meaning we go angel, elemental, galactic, and and then you feel the crossover as well, that they're not always so separate and they're very interwoven and, and interconnected. And you know, you can feel the blending of those energies rather than the separation. And your healing modality is based on its connection to the Lyran heritage, right? The crystalline soul healing. What is that about? What is that like for you? What is that like for your students? Yeah. So um, the I, I remember a long time ago, sometime in the early uh, mid two thousands, um, I had it was the first time I had found out that I was Lyran, and I I had a session with someone, and and it hadn't happened yet, but I got this message. I was just sitting there, and all of a sudden, I I thought in my head, oh, I'm Lyran. And and stuff just started flooding in, but not stuff that I could really identify. And so I was just like, okay, well, whatever. And, and so 
couple of days or so later, I had that session. And one of the first things she said was, oh, you're Liren. And then she was talking a little bit about their template builders. And that just felt like zip right over my head. I didn't understand what that meant or what to do with that at all. So as I started doing healing, because I was just so passionate about it and my guides were teaching me different aspects and, and things like that as, as I was working, um, eventually over time, I realized that I had created a template and a template works just like a program that you would run on your computer. Like say you run a database cleaner or something like that. You know, it's running and it's checking for certain things. Oh, it has this. Okay. Well, what do we do with that? Okay. It doesn't have this skip it. Oh, it has that. This is what we do with that. So that's in essence what the, the modality is. It is an alchemical template that is running through a lot of different topics that are seeding always to your higher self. If, if something's appropriate for you to release, it releases. If something's appropriate for you to activate, it activates. And, and so the alchemical template is interacting with your field and your higher self is the ultimate decider of how that process will release and activate. And is this something that comes from you? This is, um, so you teach in person or online. And so it sounds like there's constant transmissions going on. So I, I teach it in person and online, although this year I'm just doing it online. And so I go through each section of the template because there's many sections of the template and, and um, I initiate that section into the student's field. And, um, and then they end up with the overall template at the end with all of the the programs that are going to run and release and activate. And, and then when, whether it's you wanting your own healing or um, some prayer that you want to send to earth or someone else, or if you're working directly with people and they come for a healing session and they, they have a certain thing going on in their life that they want to shift, um, then the, they run the template for that issue and, uh, you know, it will release and it will activate as appropriate for their higher self for their moment. And, and so the, the process through my guides was teaching every aspect of that template to me through experience. And, and then that's what I'm initiating into their field. And then that's what they're using to facilitate change for themselves and others and earth and things like that. That sounds amazing. Really amazing. It's so much fun. So much fun. I love it. And actually I have a class coming up in April. Um, at the end of April. And the thing that I really love about it, because I, I finalized this back in um, like early 05, somewhere, somewhere in 05. And, and I had been working on it for years. And for some of those years, not even knowing what I was doing, that I was creating a template. I just kind of thought I was a little um, obsessive, like, huh, what, what if this, what about this? And what about this? And so I was just making lists and, and gathering data. And, and then eventually I realized I was making a template, but um, right there at the end. <laughs> um, and at that time I started teaching it to people and, and it just wasn't, they weren't quite ready yet. The people that took it were, but it just wasn't quite ready. And then um, I moved to Sedona and I stopped teaching that and started teaching light language. I knew I would come back Mm. to it, but I knew it wasn't quite time yet. And, and then I want to say in 2015, I started teaching it again um, and was teaching that every year. And I could see now, you know, from that vantage point, like, oh, it makes sense to me now because the way we understand our subtle field, the way we understand our intentions, how we understand the blending of physical and non-physical rules, that's that's what this is all about, is that blend of I'm in physical, how do I work with the non-physical? And so it goes into a lot of detail of how we interact on the non-physical. So you're naturally applying 
the rules of the non-physical realm, or you're naturally amplifying your ascension. And, and that's what that template is um, teaching so clearly is that your intention has this myriad of effect. It has this cascade of effect at all times. And so the more we become conscious with that and we recognize all of the supports and the layers of healing that are available to us with actual ease, it's a complex template, but it's also very simple. And that's the, that's the, the overall thing to learn with the working with the non-physical it's complex but it's overall very simple when you stay in that knowing and and you develop that sense of peace Mm -hmm. that neutrality then you're more open to the flow of information and and our biomechanism is so beautifully attuned to already filter out the stuff that we don't need and give us signals and kind of bring them up when we're ready. It's just a matter of listening more. And in essence, that's kind of what the whole modality is about is, is your, your listening and seeing what the template does. Wow. Sounds like coding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. I want to ask you if you'll share some of your story because it's, it's quite a story of what has happened to you and how you fought it (laughs) and how it took over anyway and kept coming through you just reminds me of somebody, you know, trying to hold their mouth while things are pouring out. And, Mm -hmm. um, and and it was a really interesting journey. So I'd love people to hear some of that story that I read about in your book, opening to light language. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I, I love about the variety of stories with this is some people were open as children. Some people were not, some people had a very fast opening. Some people have a very, um, slow opening over time. And it always occurs in the way that's perfect for us, even though it's not always easy. And for me, I was not a psychic child. I, I even remember trying when I was like into my teens and I just couldn't get anything to happen. I was trying to ask to project. I was trying to see things, and just nada. And um, it wasn't until what was actually the harmonic convergence, which I didn't know about at the time. At that time, I started getting psychic flashes, but I didn't know what they were. I just thought, whoa, that was a weird image to have in my mind or, or experience to happen. And one of the ways that they came on was clear audience and, and it would feel like my thought, but it would be something that was so out of the blue and uh, kind of like us (laughs) now it'd be so out of the blue and it would be something that was provable within a few hours. And it was always so random. Like I was driving home the first time I remember that happening. And I heard this person's going to be at your house. I hadn't seen that person, talked to that person. I don't even know how that person would know where I lived. Well, I could. Yeah. Um, Cause I was living with my best friend and, and we, they knew each other too. So having that happen and I get home and there's no one there except my best friend, my roommate. And she's sitting there and she's like, guess who's coming over? Like, is it so and so? And she's like, "How did you know?" And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I heard that." And that would happen sometimes. I was driving to another state, and I would get this message: "So and so is going to be there at the place I was driving to, hours away." There they were, and so um, things like that would happen, and that was fun and exciting, and other ways that that would occur. But. Um, I started also seeing healing happening. So I would see people connected through their chakras. And sometimes I would see crown chakras connected. And sometimes I would see people connected through their second chakras and, and just all kinds of different things that I started seeing auras and, and seeing those connections. And that went on for a little while. And then it just kept changing over time. But the thing that was coming up was my sensitivity and a lot of things coming up that had been suppressed. And so that started to create depression within me that I had to deal with, with reflexology and and then dealing with um, my mental and emotional around that. 
um, getting into more empowerment and boundaries and things. And then eventually I started doing healing work. And after I had an axiotonal alignment, that's when the light language started in the early 2000s. And that began as movements that were smaller and got bigger and bigger, which I was fine with. I was delighted with that because people were on a table with their eyes closed. So yay, that's fun. And and then eventually the sound wanted to start coming through. And I found myself incredibly shy and worried about that in ways that I couldn't quite define. I just kind of felt like, oh my gosh, I can't be normal anymore. I don't even know what I thought that was, but I would go to like a channeling or some kind of spiritual event where I used to be able to enjoy those things. Now my body was twitching and it just wanted to pour out. And so I would have to sit on my hands and twitch and keep my mouth shut and and try to hold it in. And um, finally, I, I, set this intention that I would um, let it flow quietly in the back of the room. And I realized that because I didn't want to disturb, that would just, that's not, that's rude. (laughs) So um, I would sit in the back of the room, which I was already doing. And I'm like, maybe I can just let this flow silently sometimes. And, and it definitely did that. It was more about my resistance. And then that final piece was me doing a class where um, I, did light language for people. And it was so loud and abrupt at first that it scared a child in the room and she started crying. It made my, one of my friends just die laughing (laughs) and, and they were each coming up one by one. And that was the first person that came up and, and that happened. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm just, no, I'm going to be sitting here with crickets and nobody's going to want to come up and experience that. But everyone did, and and then uh, except for the the child, she was about twelve or thirteen or something. And her father came up to me afterwards, who was a client of mine, and he said, "I want a session on what do you have next week." And when he came for his session, there I was hearing the sounds in my head and holding them in like I was accustomed to doing. And at that point, my guide said, "It's okay, you can hold it in. It'll just take him longer to heal." And gosh, it still gets me every time. <laughs> and I, I knew what they meant. They didn't mean, you know, light language is the only way to heal or it's the best. It wasn't that. It's that I was holding back. I was at a new choice point. I had been nurtured through that whole process. And now I was at a new choice point. Here's someone that has seen it at its biggest. Mm-hmm. It scared his own child. And he's like, I want more of that. And so I realized that. I could not live with having been able to do more, but not doing it because I was shy or embarrassed. And this is just somebody that wants to heal. And and, uh, so I let it out and haven't held it back since, even though I have had other times of ups and downs and doubts with it. Like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? It just passes. And that's been many years now. And the, the sacredness of the connection that I feel and, and the experiences that I have and certainly what I see with others and, and being part of that, making it easier for others to do, I, I would not trade that for the world. I don't care how many people tell me I'm crazy or weird or it's fake or whatever. I know the truth and I know how important it is. And so even all of that long journey of holding it in was so worth it to have it flow. Yeah. Incredible. I know one of your stories in the book is that you're at a cry on event, Lee Carroll, who's been on the show, he's delightful and that you take yourself to the back of the room. And then as it's going on, it is coming out of you. And it's, I think the end of the event and people are coming out of the room and seeing you do this and they're stopping, but it's a really positive experience. People are actually feeling, sensing, receiving something from what you're doing. So it's fascinating that all this time, you know, at all your markers, you're actually getting this sort of go ahead from humanity. Like, yeah, there's something here. There's something powerful going on. Yes. 
You were supported. Yes, absolutely. And and there was another crayon story in there that uh, was really helpful. I was letting this out in the back. And before that happens, so this was peacefully just flowing. And Lee was taking questions and someone stood up and said, um, I used, my hands used to move around and all these sounds would come out of my mouth. And I went to the shaman and he told me it was the devil and he took it out of me. What do you think about that, Lee? <laughs> I was like, oh, what's he going to say? <laughs> and by that point, it was so perfect. I was so glad to have it, but I knew, mm. I knew what was coming out of me was love. Mm. And um, so, so I was like, wow, what's he going to say? And he said, um, you know, I've had some experiences of observing that in ways that I would have never believed it if mm. I hadn't had the direct experience I had. And I believe that shaman was lovingly telling you what you wanted to hear and then giving you what you needed in the moment. And I was like, yeah. Yes, because it's this... not of the devil at all. Right. <clears throat> not at all. It's so natural to us. It's not just for special people. It's natural to us. We communicate with spirit in so many different ways. This is just one way. Mm. And it's such a beautiful bridge of the linearity. Because crystalline soul healing, for example, is quiet. There's no movements to it. You can't hear it or, or see it. It's it's quiet. And with light language, there's an there's a there is expression to it, yes. whether it's verbal or it's written or signed, there's expression to it. Now, sometimes I have it silently in my head, but there is a bridge of communication to it that we recognize as conversation or song or movement or written. And, and so it, it's helping us to soften that linearity around that and, and ultimately let go of some of the contextualization and some of the memorization that we have for our communication so that we stay in the present more. So it's another way of bridging the linear and the nonlinear, the physical and the non-physical. And when you do it, I mean... There's so many theatrical ways I could talk about it, but it's so much like a dance. It's like a song coming out of your mouth. And even though your body, you're standing up and you're not moving your body that much, but what you're doing with your hands, it's, it's really spectacular to watch mm. and receive. What is it like for you while you're orating and signing the sign language? Yeah. So, um, at, at some point, we'll have to do more movement oriented um, because that's mainly for the camera where I have to stay in there. <laughs> He's like trying to, I'm behind a tree. Um, but um, it, it is like, and, and I'm a full body channel. So sometimes I have um, certain energies that are working with my physicality in some way. And I have other energies that are working with my, um, you know, vocals. Other times it's more unified. It just kind of varies. But what it feels like is a, a flow of energy expressing through you, almost like water through a, um, a pipe that is just filled out and flowing. And um, it, it can bring such blissful feelings. It can bring even tears and things, sometimes even tears of release where I can feel sorrow, for example, but it's not the same as being sad. It's almost like this beautiful release in those moments. So the, the expansion and that sense of blending is even evident with that because I'm conscious, you know, you, you don't go unconscious. Um, in fact, it's, it's very different than channeling in your known language because when I channel in English, they're using my vocabulary and they can stretch me beyond that a little bit, but not much because that's the mechanism that they're using to express. When I, so it, in essence, it feels like I'm channeling and I'm connected to something that's beyond me, but I have to stay a little removed. Because if I focus too much, like, oh, that reminds me of this thing that happened, then I start to pull the channel off because they're using my mental capacities, my language capacities. 
when I channel light language, it feels like I'm channeling in this wide open uh, flow that has a different focus to it where all of that is occurring and I'm observing. Whereas when I channel in English, I have to just listen and not observe too closely. <laughs> so it's it's a, a really interesting flow of connection with life. And um, they both have their value, but it just helps to really blend the experience of I'm me, I'm experiencing separation. Um, I know what it feels like to move my hand. I know what it feels like to make sound out of my mouth. And I know what it feels like to let that flow without my uh, creation of it or my yes. impetus. Oh my so it's God. really expansive. This light language thing, i have it's not that it's new in my world, but it's new for me to do in this group that I'm meeting with. And um, in the beginning, it was so uncomfortable. You know, I was here and trying to get out of here and just let whatever happened, happened. And, and then um, and what we've been doing is picking a card recently. So I'm using your deck because that's what I resonate with. And the, the last couple of times, what has come out of me has been toning, has been song-ish, but it's not singing and it's something else. And what's been beautiful about it is I've been able to be still enough because I don't know where it's going and I don't know if it's over. And then something else will come out. And, and when it's complete, I'm aware it's complete. What do you think about that? Is there a light language that is comprised of toning and notes, sound in that way? So if, if we think about the experience of separation and the experience of connection, um, it's the same with light language. So here I am having an experience of separation and here's my layer of a little more connection. Here's my layer of more connection and more and more. And it's the same with light language because um, language rather than being, oh, what words did they say or sing or write? It's what information is flowing. If we think of language as more broad and light, if we think of that as just an expression, um, a carrier vehicle of information. So um, when we go into those higher, more connected um, aspects of light language, everything is light and everything is information we're externalizing. Even if we say nothing, we are in the realm of externalization. So light is emanating from us. So we could even say in that broad level, everything is light language because everything is conveying information. But I like to separate it into, um, you know, spoken, sung, signed, and, and written for us to understand that bridge. And yet, Toning is a form of light language. Um, some silence can be a form of light language. Um, and, and what we're doing in those times is conveying information through sound or you know, through movement, if that's what's occurring. But there's clicking languages. There's languages that sound... Um, much more like we would associate words, quote unquote. And then there's some that sound more like buzzing or um, frequencies or tones. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll have some that uh, sound almost like it's the same thing repeating. Uh, for example, not that I'm channeling at this moment, but it might go like, and and it's uh, it, it's the frequency is in there, even though we can't hear the separation within it. So and that's not toning. That an happens aspect. the clicking, the buzzing. That's not mantis related at all. That's it actually, could be okay. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. Hmm. Uh, there are a lot of mantoid uh, languages that click, but they're not the only ones. So yeah, definitely could be. So many types of light language is what you're saying. And I know based on your book, there's elven, there's fairy, there's angelic. I even heard somebody say dragon, which I'd love to hear. Absolutely. And so 
Is it ad infinitum? How many Absolutely. variations? Absolutely. Because um, conveying information like that is inherent to life. Um, we just all do it in different ways. Um, even the amoeba that doesn't, um, you know, con- communicate like we do, it's still conveying information into the field. So um, any kind of species, whether that's an animal species or, uh, you know, a human or, or you know, galactic species, angelics, um, elementals, all forms of elementals, they, they all... And, Earth could be um, ancient Earth. It could be future Earth. There's there's two main categories of light language. There's uh, glossolalia is a technical term for it. That's they're all unknown to the channeler, but it's a language that's not known on Earth, like angelic or galactic or elemental. And then there's xenoglossia, which is unknown to the channeler, but it's a language that is known on Earth. So we also have the capability to um, channel and earth languages that are current that we don't know. It's also but, wild to hear somebody doing light language and they're not even trailing off yet. And they interrupt themselves to go into English and translate what they've been saying, almost like you were speaking French fluently. And then suddenly you're trying to explain to everybody who's an English audience, oh, this is what's being said. And then you can go back into the light language. Mm-hmm. That is mind blowing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's there's a consciousness while you're in there. And many times it will happen spontaneously and that will seem like that wasn't my choice. You, you can pull it back eventually if you really wanted to, but um, the, the flow of it can be stopped and started within reason. So um, some people will uh, do that in English. Um, I tend to write notes when I'm in a uh, like session or something because I'd rather just scribble and, and keep the flow going, but it's all just a personal preference and whatever works for you. And it might change at another time. So always be open to however that's flowing and it's, it's expanding so rapidly right now. It's really beautiful to see because it's part of our ascension. And that doesn't mean someone has to do it in order to be on an ascension path or to ascend, but it's part of it. It's something that's available for us. And so I just absolutely love it. And I would love to be activated if there was a way that, you know, third eye, whatever it would take to have my field, my being activated uh, to do this. I'm just so fascinated by it. Do you actually activate people for light language? Is that possible? And how does that work? Absolutely. Um, For some people, it's going to happen naturally and there's no, um, you know, direct connection of, ah, that was the activation. Um, For others, you know, hearing it um, or experiencing it will activate it. And for others, that doesn't activate it. it. It just takes a little bit more effort. But if somebody wants to do it, it's there and available. I mean, even in my book, I go through um, exercises to do to speak it or sing it or write it or sign it. And and, uh, it's definitely available to us. And because you've already got it coming through, you know, you've had some experiences with it, you're activated and yet expansion will always occur. I still have expansion that occurs because that's part of this realm, you know? the realm of change. So yeah, you're activated and you will continue to activate more. I love that. Okay. Well, this feels like a good time if it does to you to do an offering. And if you would be willing to, and I want to leave it up to you and those who come through you or wherever, whatever energy you're in right now to do a channeling and or light language, both um, we're here for it. Great. So um, what I was getting as you were talking was actually working on peace, the card that you chose. Um, So let's see how I do this, if I'll do um, English and light language or not. Hmm, Okay. So at the very least, I'm going to start with crystalline soul healing and light language, and uh, we'll see if English comes or not. So everyone just take a nice, relaxing breath. 
And if you feel more comfortable, you can even state aloud or silently, I only allow what is for my highest good. And as I'm doing the frequencies, just see what you notice, anything physical, mental, emotional, any psychic impressions. Share to go or tandy hand to um. Brahma chana that kriana tad bam amdor the kand. Bram chat kinen that honey in surutrum dead ear grand that in any old room ta tau sacran that and actual grand that am. Bran tiet nan sukuro tandi am. Chana to the coro tand im chabrutand. Kral hanan that hane ed suchunum. Bran the clear tand ed sut unud coa. Kane knea tati. Premom now sa nan, or a man now rat anen, nan shukur tandit im, brananani il renet such am, correrum anshirakrendet hel rununund, danandik end krorma, wash the kriendet, et siet, et siet. Sum kakiem a shantut hand. Brannat o kuramet, nen so kuret handi i, nen en sur am shayaru kuram mo am, nema grandat i. Sur oa rimba kriet Mnam hashanut mrenda kral rene randu, mnam orme ororum akrayan dana dir urut um sakrurime. Here, who a mea and such unum grandat hire it unoralel, mnamat unon in sun shor creer and shed a group and ni, nin sut urukurut and clel renen sherma nima. Damor am jarak rot and kral rana at nen se hit ear. Sukua am. Good. Another relaxing breath. And if you like, you can gently rub your hands together. You can rub your hands on your legs. Just bring yourself into a more active brain state. So I want to share a little of what I was getting during that. Oh, yes. Even though yes. your experience might be different because your higher self is, is releasing and activating for you. Um, so in the beginning, that was a fairy energy. And they are so loving and supportive and joyous most often um, and just effervescent and it was so sweet the the big lesson in that one because ultimately this was all connected to peace but um, 
one of the things that that energy was talking about was um, taking in life and taking it in fully, but taking it in with the recognition of the the beauty. And if that's not the case, then the marvel at it. And the way that they showed me that, I even you know was physically breathing in for a very long time. And um, at at first, it was like breathing in beautiful flower fragrance. And then it was like breathing in something noxious, uh, like skunk, for example. And they were showing me the that even in the flower kingdom, for example, there are flowers that smell wonderful. There are flowers that don't smell wonderful. And, and that's their fragrance, not just dying flowers. So that was very fairy-like, especially to be like, love it all. It's just a marvel. And then the energy shifted and um, I could feel a very galactic, a little bit more masculine energy. And part of what the, the message behind that was, was the, the honoring of your physicality, your unique experience, because especially as it relates to peace, it's ultimately our own responsibility to hold our peace within our circumstances. And that doesn't mean always be a monotone in every experience. The example my guides have often given, you know, if a child is running into the street, you don't say, oh, please don't run into the street. You yell <laughs> to get attention and like, whoa, come back. You know, it, it's so it depends on the situation, but that we are responsible for our peace, which means love and nurture the self, really hold that peace because we each deserve it. It's part of our divinity. It's part of our divine service. It's part of our um, exercise to ascend beyond what is into what can be to those potentials, the unformed. And then there was a very distinct experience of physically working with the body and strengthening the, the torso and the, the core channel flow so that we could maintain our chi a little better. Oh, wow. I felt that so strongly. That was so beautiful. I had tears in my eyes and the breath between each movement, if you will, and what you were doing where you would, your your face would turn to the side and then in, it was so sort of voce, you couldn't even hear what you were saying, but you, I could feel and the beautiful pause. And then you would come back and reemerge with, with something else as part of the message. And, and even the hands, I mean, when you got to what looked like third eye and crown chakra, and then, you know, bringing it down, it just felt so healing. Um, so full of love. That was exquisite. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm. you. And this is something that we can all do. <laughs> it's, it's so available to all of us. Um, I just, I love it. I love how much is expanding now and people feel it and understand it or, or experience it. And it's just really growing because we are. Yeah. Is there an energy ascension forecast, something that we should as light workers and star seeds be aware of that's coming down the pike. So we can incorporate that beautiful piece you just gave us. Yeah. So um it, one thing that Ariane does is you know they'll encapsulate the energies of the year and they'll encapsulate each month and and um, sometimes they'll hold a quarter together, other times they won't. Um, and the, the overall energies that we're going through this year are about connection. So big parts of that are the human and higher self connection or physical and non-physical connection um, and, and really holding our purpose within a moment, which again is going to be up and down. And this, we are now in April almost, you know, um, like a few days before it. And so the, the energies this month are about being in oneness. And we have gone through this, this 
these first four months have been about nurturing the inner realm so that we're feeling more of that freedom. We're uh, not letting restriction hold us back that it feels like, oh, this is a lovely structure. Good. This is what's here now and keeps, keeps changing. And then March and April feel very similar with allowing and being in oneness because it's getting us accustomed to ultimately that state of peace that's like this neutrality that just, oh, positive, negative, positive, negative. It's really all one. And these next six months feel much more mentally oriented Mm. that almost feels like we are going to be tasked to maintain our mental focus so that no matter what's going on around us or what's going on in our own life, we're holding more of that peace. And, you know, this, for me particularly, this is a very intense time. I've got a lot of things going on in personal life and family and physically and just, uh, you know, work and everything. And it has really almost like focused me into, I, I have to be more deliberate but from the state of love, like for instance, I took a walk the other day and, and one thing that I made sure to do, even though I love walking briskly, like it's, it's a workout. Um, I didn't do it because I felt like I had to, I made sure that that energy was coming from joy and uh, sharing of nature, which I can often sneak in there and be like, I should do it. Oh, this is a workout. And then I'm like, Oh, just love nature. I had to really shift that focus so that the mental wasn't sneaking in some some obligation into something that should be joyous. And that's how our creative state should be. So these next six months especially are going to be very much more mentally focused. And anytime you can soften that perspective and, and be in the unformed and be in the open joyousness or peace, that's going to shift the things that even are obligation into much more of a creative state. So um, that's exciting in some ways, feels kind of intensified. And yet they rarely give me stuff that's um, much more ahead, but I have this, um, got this message that October is very much a whole other layer of opening, especially with the throat chakra. So it's kind of prepping us for that. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Incredible. So folks who are interested, I know you've got these amazing cards. We experienced one of them today called the Cosmic Consciousness Ascension Deck. And then also this now very worn and read book, which is Opening to Light Language, Humanities, Evolution, and Multidimensional Communication by Jamie Price. Where can folks get this? Where can people work with you? Um, So everything is on my website, jamieprice.com. And yes, it's Jam Yi, again, if you're hooked on phonics, (laughs) Um, J-A-M ye price.com and the the book is there it's it's actually going to be out on fully on amazon the ebook is on amazon but i'll be putting the the soft cover on amazon soon as well um the cards are only on the website um the upcoming crystalline soul healing class is on the website and um i will be teaching light language again in the late summer and fall so there's also a place where you can sign up for the to be emailed about that if you like um, but everything is right there on my website, jamieprice.com. Okay, everybody. So that's J A M Y E price.com. And Jamie, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and visions? Oh, so much more joy. Like I, that, that recognition that's within all of us, that's the dream feeling that, seeing others feeling that, and uh, living the dream. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. This has been beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to meet my blue Liren sister. Right on, right on. Yes. And peace to everybody. I end today's show with this quote. There are things that we never want to let go of people we never want to leave behind. But keep in mind, 
that letting go is not the end of the world. It's the beginning of a new life. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation. Leave a comment. I read all of them and share the show with somebody whom you know will love its message. Next week on the show, I am featuring the amazing Tarek BB. He's the starseed indigo prophet. Tarek helps healers and light workers clear the root of any of your blockages and manifest your heart's desires. And truly, everybody, it is time to go with peace, whatever is going on with your life. And I hope that today's show helped you dare to dream and dare to turn all your dreams into your reality.